Yo, what is going on everybody? This video, we're gonna be talking about passing by value and passing by reference. Specifically, we're talking about passing arguments to functions. So make sure you watch my videos over functions so you understand the general idea, and then you should be pretty good following this video. Now this is the concept video. The code follow-up is going to be in the next video, so if you're looking for a hands-on example, make sure you get through this video to understand how it works, and then check out the upcoming video. But before you check out the upcoming video, you gotta check out our sponsor, which is Embarcadero Rad Studio. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ code base and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. Now let's say we create some function, and we take some argument. Let's just start with an integer. When we call this function in our code, we pass a value to this function. So we'll first go through an example when we just pass a value such as five. Well, this five is going to be copied into this variable, which can be used inside the body of the function. Now, what if you do a variable here instead of a value? So let's say at some point we define some variable we can name it the same thing as the function, but it doesn't have to be named the same thing. They are two separate variables, but let's just call them the same thing in this situation. So we have some variable that was defined, int x equals five, and then we pass in x. Well, here's the thing you need to understand is that when you do this, the value five is copied into this variable. So that means somewhere in memory, we have two variables. They both happen to be called x, and they both have the value five, but they're two distinct variables. Meaning if we change X inside of this function and we say X now has the value 13, well, what this is going to do is it's going to replace the value here and it's not going to affect this original variable. So that means after this function called down here, X is still going to have the value five. And that is a very, very essential concept you need to understand when, it, when we're talking about functions inside of C++. Everything is passed by value. So this whole concept is known as pass by value. Now, the one exception to this is arrays. So if you create an array, and I'm hesitant to draw it out because I'll probably just mess everything up. If you create an array which contains multiple elements, when you pass an array to a function, it's not passed by value. If it was passed by value, all of the values in the array would be copied to this new variable. But instead, it's passed by pointer. So what that means, inside of memory, we have an array that contains some data. And when you pass that array to the function, it gets a pointer to that memory location. So what that means is, let's say this was an array, that variable now points to the same array. So that means any changes we do to the array inside of the function are visible on the outside. So, so far we talked about basically two ways of passing variables. One is pass by value, which is the default for everything. The other way we talked about is passing by pointer and more accurately, it would be said as decaying to a pointer. So when you pass an array, let's say this is not an integer, it's actually an integer array, and we take that array and pass it to the function, it decays to a pointer, meaning it loses its type information. So inside of the function, it no longer understands that it's an array of a certain length. It only sees it as a pointer to the first element. So this is just going to point to that first element here inside of the array. Okay, so that's a lot of information. Now there is a third way of passing information and that is passing by reference. Now passing by reference is very similar to the way arrays are passed, but it's not something that happens automatically we can't change. It's something we have to say that we want to do. So if we want to pass something by reference, it's similar to how an array decays to a pointer, but the difference is that we manually do it and it doesn't lose any type information. So let me explain and in the next video, we'll go over some hands-on examples. It'll be a lot more clear. 
let's go back to the beginning. We have an integer variable x, another integer variable x, and then we call the do stuff function. And we pass in x. Well, if we want to be able to change that variable inside of this function, we need to pass by reference. And the way we do that is we prefix the variable name with the and sign, which my and sign drawing abilities have skyrocketed since the start of this YouTube channel. So I'm making some serious handwriting progress. So it's gonna look something like this. Now you might see the and sign here, you might see it attached to the type, it doesn't really matter. As long as it's between integer and x, you should be good to go. Now in this situation, this x here and this x here are going to refer to the same area of memory. So if we pass in x value of five, and then inside of here we assign the value 11, well, this is going to be replaced with 11, and after this function call, x will now be valued at 11. So that is passing by reference. This is important to do if we have very large data structures or if we want the functions to be able to modify the variables. So this is very common with vectors. If we have some function that we want to alter data inside of a vector, we need to pass that by reference. That's because only arrays are going to be changeable inside of a function by default. Anything else we need to pass by reference. So this X is essentially an alias, or in other words, a nickname for the same variable. It doesn't have to have the same name here. You could name it Y. It doesn't matter. All you need to know is that when you change this variable, you are changing this variable. All right, so that is your basics for passing things as arguments. The very first way to do it is pass by value, which is the default for everything except arrays. Now this is even if you're using a custom class type. So if you have an object of a custom type, that is still going to be passed by value, which is actually different than a lot of other popular programming languages. In C Sharp, for example, objects are going to pass by reference by default, not the case in C++. So everything is passed by value except arrays, which decay to pointers. Then the third type is passed by reference. With your, if you're working with anything that's passed by value and you want to be able to change it inside of the function, then you need to pass by reference by prefixing it with the and sign. All right, so that is all I have for you in this video. Please consider subscribing if you've enjoyed this content. And if there is anything else you'd like to add or anything you're concerned or questioned about, leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll see what I can do. Thanks and I'll see you in the next